Actual images of what NASA discovered on Europa's freckled moon. Europa, Jupiter's moon is stunning. Have you seen it before? It's right here. This is not an artist concept or an illustration, and this incredible image depicts the interesting surface of Jupiter's frozen moon as observed by the Galileo satellite in the 1990s. This is Europa's color view, which shows the most of the moon's surface at the maximum resolution. Color changes across the surface are linked to variances in the type and position of geologic features. Colors, for example, assist us in distinguishing areas holding water ice from those containing non-ice components. We shall discuss this later in this video. I'd like to ask you to have a seat and take a deep breath because we're about to enter this beautiful world. Are you prepared? Let's get started. First, three young women taken by Jupiter for hidden love will be honored, including Europa, Aegener's daughter. The second moon is called by me, Europa. Io, Europa, the boy Ganymede, and Callisto greatly pleased the lustful Jupiter. Simon Marius wrote this in his famous Mundus Io Vialis in 1614. Simon Marius was a German astronomer who studied under Tycho Brahe and Johannes Kepler. He described Jupiter and its moons in Mundu Iovialis. He was at odds with Galileo because he claimed to have found the four primary moons before Galileo. Today, we believe that Marius discovered Jupiter's moons independently of Galileo, but at least a few days after the Italian. Whatever the exact sequence of events, the four moons mythological names, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, are those given to them by Marius. Europa was the princess of Tyre and the queen of Creta in Greek mythology. In 1610, the great scientist focused his telescope towards Jupiter and discovered the four Galilean satellites, now known as Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. It's difficult to decide which of them is the most fascinating moon. One may imagine Io, the horrible world, or Ganymede, with its vast aqueous ocean beneath the snow. But Europa, this ball of silicate rock with a water ice shell, is incredible. Take a look at this photo every time we glance at it. It depicts the four Galilean moons, beginning with Io and concluding with Callisto. The New Horizons spacecraft had the honor of taking these images, which NASA combined into a single-family portrait of Jupiter's moons. Europa, as you can see, is the smallest of them all. It has a diameter of 3,120 kilometers and was photographed by New Horizons from a distance of around 3 million kilometers. If you look attentively, you may see that Europa's surface differs from that of other moons. It has an icy, flat top that most likely hides an ocean of liquid water behind it. Why is it so easy? Craters appear to be few on Europa's surface. Europa, on the other hand, is the smoothest known object in the solar system. It is devoid of large-scale features like as mountains and craters. Given that Europa is regularly bombarded by comets, we can explain the smoothness by claiming that the surface is very young, with an estimated age of 20 to 180 million years. Finally, the surface is continually and swiftly changing. Does this, however, imply that Europa's surface is dull? Is it a flat surface with no distinguishing features? That is not entirely correct. Scientists believe Europa's equator, for example, may be unusually coated with ice. Consider the Earth's polar regions, it has nothing to do with them. According to one study, icy spikes known as penitents are covering the moon's equator instead. They could reach up to 15 meters in height and be vertical. Unfortunately, we do not have images of these unique characteristics, but radar and thermal data support this conclusion. Europa also has freckles, as evidenced by this image taken by the Galileo Orbiter Probe. These reddish patches and tiny pits dot Europa's intriguing ridged surface. Each one is around 100 kilometers across. The black dots are known as lenticuli, which is Latin for freckles. 
Their similar proportions and spacing imply that Europa's icy shell is churning away like a lava lamp, with warmer ice migrating upward from the bottom and colder ice near the surface sinking downward. According to the NASA website, surface features suggest that Europa could support life. The surface of Europe has few craters, indicating that recent or ongoing geologic activity has removed the traces of older impacts. The scarcity of craters, together with other evidence, has led scientists to believe that an ocean of liquid water exists beneath Europa's surface. There may be life where there is water. This is why Europa is a current focus of research on the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Europa Orbiter, a follow-up spacecraft to Galileo, will discover whether or not Europa has an ocean. Europa orbits Jupiter in three and a half days at a distance of around 670.900 kilometers. Its orbit eccentricity is exceptionally low, with a value of only 0.009, indicating that the orbit is virtually circular. Jupiter and other surrounding moons are pulling and stretching Europa. The gravitational attraction of Jupiter increases as it gets closer to it, causing Europa to stretch toward and away from it. Europa's gravitational attraction reduces as it moves away from Jupiter, causing it to relax back into a more spherical shape. This causes tides in the ocean. This tidal flexing provides Europa with a source of heat, potentially allowing its ocean to remain liquid. However, Europa's most remarkable surface features are a network of dark stripes called lineae that crisscross the entire globe. These lineae imply that volcanoes could exist on Europa's surface. The Galileo orbiter captured this image of features that may flow from ice volcanoes. The Galileo system captured it during its eighth orbit around Jupiter. The area is illuminated from the left by the sun. The northwest corner of the photograph contains features that resemble lava flows on Earth. Instead, the southern feature appears to have poured over a ridge along its western margin. This lovely image clearly displays the existence of lineae. Color changes across the surface are linked to variances in the type and position of geologic features. Patches that appear blue or white, for example, contain relatively pure water ice, whereas reddish and brownish patches have higher proportions of non-ice components. The polar regions, visible to the left and right of this image, appear bluer than the more equatorial latitudes, which appear whiter. This color difference is assumed to be caused by changes in ice grain size between the two locations. Now that we've learned a lot about the surface, what about the deeper structure? As previously stated, Europa is thought to have an exterior layer of water roughly 100 kilometers thick. There could be an ocean of liquid water beneath an ice crust. Astrophysicists also analyzed Europa's magnetic field to learn more about what lies underneath her surface. Recent magnetic field observations demonstrate that Europa possesses an induced magnetic field due to Jupiter's interaction, implying the possibility of a subsurface conductive layer and strengthening the liquid water hypothesis. Europa is likewise thought to have a metallic iron core. One intriguing aspect of Europa is that exposure to its radiation could result in death. The radiation level on Europa's surface is equivalent to around 5,400 millisieverts per day, an amount of radiation that would induce severe disease or death in humans if exposed for a single Earth day. A European day lasts roughly 3.5 times as long as an Earth day, resulting in 3.5 times the radiation exposure. Europa exploration began in the 1970s with the Jupiter flybys of Pioneer 10 and 11. In comparison to following missions, the earliest close-up images had very low quality. This is how Europa appeared to the Pioneer 10 spacecraft. Then, in 1979, the two Voyager probes were launched. They traversed the Jovian system, capturing more detailed photos of Europa's frozen surface. Scientists began to hypothesize about the potential of a liquid ocean beneath the Earth with the Voyager mission. Here are some images captured by the Voyager probes. But this was not the end of the story. 
NASA chose in the 1990s to better comprehend Jupiter and its moons, as well as the asteroids Gaspar and Ide. As a result, they decided to send a probe. Galileo's Probe after gravitational assist flybys of Venus and Earth, Galileo landed on Jupiter in 1995 and became the first spacecraft to orbit Jupiter. The great majority of the photographs you've seen thus far were captured by the Galileo spacecraft. But first, let me show you an astonishing collage. The mosaic on the right of Jupiter's moon Europa's south polar area depicts the northern 290 kilometers of the Estepalia Linea Strike Slip Fault. The entire fault is approximately 810 kilometers long, the length of the California portion of the Earth's San Andreas Fault, which extends from the California-Mexico border north to San Francisco Bay. The left mosaic depicts a part of the San Andreas Fault near San Francisco Bay in California, scaled to the same size and resolution as the Europa image. Each is approximately 170 by 193 kilometers in size. The red line denotes the once active core crack of the European fault, right, and the San Andreas fault line, left. The only difference between them is the mechanics that created them. In the case of Europa, fault motion is caused by tidal forces and Jupiter's gravitational drag. Large strike slip faults like the San Andreas are set in motion by plate tectonic forces in the planet's mantle, not by tidal influence. What about future Europa missions? Conjectures about extraterrestrial life have raised the reputation of Europa and led to consistent advocacy for future missions, so I believe we will hear from this faraway moon soon. We will have the Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer, JUICE, which will include two flybys of Europa while being mainly focused on Ganymede. Europa Clipper is another significant mission in the program. Its mission is to study Europa in order to investigate its habitability and choose landing sites for a future lander. Imagine how exciting it would be to discover life on a moon in our solar system. The only thing we can do is wait and keep it curious in the meanwhile. Alright everyone, here's where the video ends. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.